to call him out there. Shinners. Watch they ship in your house. Shinners. A lot of y'all sick out there. Watch him step when you call his name. Watch him break when you call his name. Shinners. you're just a referee yeah but during worship during times when we all gather together to lift our hands before the Lord and open up our mouths it's such a unifying time it's such a such a great time we can come together and assemble ourselves and really give God glory see you, you, don't, you don't really understand the importance of assembly until you can't assemble <laughs> See, when you can't assemble, then you understand the things that you've taken for granted during assembly. Yeah. And, and we're such a family-oriented church. We're such a family-oriented body of believers that when we can't come and get together, when we can't see each other, when we can't shout together, when we can't run together, when we can't dance together, when we can't 
get up and down the aisles together. Uh, uh, it, it, it's bittersweet to walk in here and look at the chairs and not see anybody in them, you know, because ultimately we love the company of each other. Uh, I don't know about you, but if you ever come to PG, you know we sit around after the church. We don't just be out the door. But we sit, we talk to each other, we, 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 we share pleasantries, you know, we, 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 we love each other's babies, and the babies walk around, and they, they get together, and you really don't appreciate it. You don't really appreciate sometimes the joy behind that until you have to watch them online. Until, you know, I know some of you say, well, I'm getting good sleep, but, 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 but I, I want to kind of twist that a little bit and, 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 and tell you how many people have we lost through the COVID to get into sleep? Uh, that couldn't come to church. So they eventually, they watch, they watch them online until eventually their tents start falling off. Eventually they stop watching. And now that church is already open, they don't feel like they have to come back to church anymore. I'm praying for that brother, that sister that's that's watching, uh, or, or, or that's not watching, that feels like they don't have to assemble anymore because the initial response of the first COVID go around has us all at home for years to change. <laughs> Good God Almighty. But just be encouraged out there. You be encouraged. And know that God is watching over you and he controls everything. He controls everything. Give honor to God for the head of my life to, to our leader, to Apostle, Apostle Maurice and Pastor Sherry A. Bromfield. Give honor to all of our elders and ministers, our leaders in the house, to all the saints and friends that are watching online live right now. I say to you, God bless you. Uh, I have a word today. Might might be a little old school, but with a new school twist. I have a word, and, 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 and I want to preach it today. I want to I want to preach it to you. A word of, 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 of inspiration, but a word also of warning. A word of awareness. I was riding in my car yesterday. It's amazing how God, for some reason, God either gives me songs in the car or He gives me words in the car. I was riding in the car yesterday afternoon after leaving a memorial service and God began to give me this subject to preach to you this morning. He began to give it to me. So by God's grace, if you pray for me out there, uh, we're going to preach this message. And who knows, maybe by the end of this game, we'll ride the mighty high. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's a message if you got your Bibles out there. You watch it, you got your solid Bibles, your phones, your tablets, whatever. You have this. Open up your word to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. Once again, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. Verses 10 through 13 of Ephesians chapter number 6. Chapter number number 6. Yeah. Giving honor to everybody that's out there watching. I know my wife is watching. Hallelujah. I know my children are watching. Baby's daddy loves you all. Deb, daddy loves you. Oh, I said Deb, daddy loves you. <laughs> ah. Oh, God. Honey, I love you so much, though. I love you. And, and, and I, I truly appreciate you, who you are, and what you've been in my life. Uh, to mother and father, my mother-in-law, who's not my mother-in-law, I call her mom too, it's a mom that's watching, to anybody else that may be watching across the world, wherever you may be watching, feel this from, God bless you, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 13, reads like this, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 13. Paul is giving us some instruction here. He's saying... 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Yeah, I'm going to take my subject matter from 13, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Yeah, and I want to preach for a subject just for a little while on this Sunday morning. Protect yourself at all times. Protect yourself at all times. I feel like preaching this morning. What? I'm just being honest with you. Uh, protect yourself at all times. If you can, just type it in the comment section. You, ain't, you don't even have to type it all out. Just type P-Y-A-A-T. If you ever agree with this sermon at any point, just type P-Y-A-A-T. Protect yourself at all times. Well, protect yourself at all times is a phrase stated by boxing referees during pre-fight instructions. If you've ever watched Mills Lane, if you've ever watched Arthur McKinney Jr., Tony Weeks, the referees back in the, the 80s of boxing and, and, and the 90s of boxing, when the heavyweight division was so, 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 so thorough, so, so, so big, it was so popular, um, you would have referees that before the bell would ring in the first round, uh, they would pull the boxers together and they would give them pre-fight instructions. And it was during these pre-fight instructions that the referee would say, protect yourselves at all times. Oftentimes, this was a phrase uh, that was constantly overlooked and ignored. But it's generally a referee's public plea and warning to both boxers before they enter a fight to protect themselves overall. Yeah, referees, uh, they state this phrase knowing that boxing is what Floyd Mayweather uh, affectionately calls it. Boxing is the hurt business. And inside the square circle, anything can happen. Anything is liable and subject to take place. In fact, inside the ring, chronicle injuries have happened. Watch this, such as uh, paralysis, where fighters uh, have been boxing and been paralyzed uh, from the wounds in the war of the battle. Uh, they've walked out the ring not being able to use their limbs, not being able to have the mobility that they had and the limberness that they had uh, before they walked into the boxing ring. Uh, uh, injuries like concussions have taken place in the boxing ring because of the blows taken to the head. Sometimes the rabbit punches where they've been hit behind the head. Sometimes the punches and blows where they've been hit to the ear and it's knocked off their equilibrium. Yeah, sometimes uh, they've suffered concussions uh, in the boxing ring. Yeah, uh, sometimes they've suffered low blows. Uh, they've suffered injuries from low blows where during moments of frustration, sometimes they've been hit below the belt and they have to take more than the initial five minutes given by the referee and the boxing commission because it took everything out of them. Being hit in the lower extremities, it injured them uh, and it jacked up their walk. And so they had lifelong paralyzing injuries hit from low blows. Uh, some injuries have been known to be broken orbital bones, which is the bone above the eye, where they've been hitting the eye and it broke the bone above their eye and it caused them to be in excruciating pain. And because of this, they haven't been able to box again because it affected their vision. And once the orbital bone is broken, uh, doctors strongly advise for you to seek another profession. Yeah, yeah, they've suffered deep facial lacerations and cuts from the injuries fighting and boxing they've suffered it if you've ever seen a fighter get cut so bad uh, that it looks nasty in the ring if you've ever seen a fighter get 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 hit so much to the point uh, to where now the ring doctor has to come up in between rounds uh, and look at the cut and judge it and weigh it out uh, and decide if the fight should go on injuries have happened uh, in the ring such as ACL and Achilles tears uh, because boxers have made sudden movements and, and 
and quick herky jerk movements uh, that messed up the ACL joints in their knees uh, and messed up their Achilles so now their mobility is off and they can't walk the same they can't run the same yeah yeah boxers have faced injuries sometimes in a ring such as bleeding on the brain because watch this even when your brain is brain is bleeding sometimes uh, you don't always feel it right away so they walked away and they and they stepped out the ring uh, and they've come down and found themselves uh, bleeding from the brain yeah yeah they've had brain bleeding injuries yeah some boxers have left the boxing ring uh, with heart conditions a la Evander Holyfield uh, Evander Holyfield didn't want to retire uh, but he was forced to retire because uh, he had a heart condition this this, this thing is real y'all uh, boxing is not a sport to play ticky tock with no uh, but brothers really risk their lives in the ring there's been such injuries watch this even death uh, boxing Boxers have boxed and walked out the ring for the last time. They've gone to the back and sat in their locker rooms for the last time. They will go to the hospital and find out that something happened and what happened to them in the end ultimately took their life. Good God Almighty. These have all taken place in the boxing ring where fighters were walked. They were initially instructed to protect themselves. Good God Almighty. They were instructed to protect uh, themselves. And after taking time to look at this, uh, after taking time to weigh it out, after taking time to judge this, uh, after I looked at it and surveyed it, uh, like in the boxing ring, uh, Tyree, like in the boxing ring, watch this, uh, leaders, members, and believers in churches and assemblies across the world uh, have suffered injuries. Good God. Uh, let me run up here. Uh, just like in the boxing ring, leaders, uh, members uh, and lay members and people across the world believers in the Lord's church uh, and assemblies across the world have suffered injuries yeah 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 you've been paralyzed sometimes in the spirit uh, where the devil would get to your mind and, and, and paralyze your praise uh, you will come into the house of God and you will be paralyzed because uh, you would have an attitude about what happened to you uh, and you would come into the house of God and want to lift your hand but can't lift your hands uh, you would come into the house of God and refused to pick up your feet. The devil paralyzed your mind and had you thinking that 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 the wrong that was done to you. Uh, watch this. That 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 not only it was man's error, but it was God's. Uh, and so he paralyzed your praise and your worship, just like boxers uh, in the spirit realm. Believers have suffered concussions. Uh, yeah, where well, they've been beat to the brain uh, in the spirit realm. The devil has smacked you all upside your head uh, and you upside your head to where you've had spiritual concussions uh, and you can't even come into the house of God and give him what's his uh, because your vision is distorted and jacked up uh, and your head is hurting you in the spirit uh, and you walking around and you and, and your walk is a little is a, is a little off uh, and, and you really can't see watch this concussions hurt worse uh, when the lights are turned on uh, and so you can't even get a good visual of Jesus being the light of the world uh, because you have a spiritual concussion yeah I'm preaching to somebody uh, just type P-Y-A-A-T if you don't mind. If I'm talking to you out there, protect yourself at all times. Believers have suffered injuries from low blows. Where you got hit by low blows in life. You got hit by things that you weren't even expecting. And it jacked you up. It took your mind. It jacked you up and it took all the wind out of you. It took the momentum from you. You were once running well. But that low blow that you experienced took the wind out of you. And now you find yourself up, double over in pain and, and and it seems like you just having to take a breather and sometimes like MC Hammer you got to pray to make it through the day yeah you got to pray because you've been hit below the belt and you can barely even move yeah if people have faced injuries uh, injuries such as cuts and wounds uh, you, you, you you've suffered cuts in this battle you've suffered wounds uh, out on the battlefield on the battlefield for the Lord you suffered deep facial lacerations in the spirit uh, you've been cut by people that you love you've been cut by people that hate you you've been cut by critics yeah you've been cut by this one cut by that one yeah and it's been hard to walk this christian walk it's been hard to 
get yourself together. Uh, you've suffered ACL and Achilles injuries in the spirit uh, to where it's been hard to get your walk straight. Uh, it's been hard to get your walk together uh, because when you tear your Achilles uh, or you tear your ACL, that's your mobility in your legs. Uh, so you can't even get your spirit to walk together uh, because you suffered ACL and Achilles injuries. Uh, some of you have had bleeding on the brain uh, in the spirit of realm and it's caused you to do opposite of the scripture that says let this mind be in you which is all you can't even let this mind be in you because you bleed in spiritually from your brain good god you suffered heart conditions oh my gosh we've all suffered heart conditions yeah yeah conditions and matters of the heart and the issues of the heart and things that has troubled you in your heart in the body of christ good god you suffered these things in the body of christ you suffered these injuries watch this and some of us in the spirit have even suffered death. Good God Almighty. I'm trying not to cry on that one, y'all. Because some of you have even suffered death. It literally took the life out of you. Everything that you countered, things that, 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 that surprised you, things that took you off guard, took you off course, literally almost took the very life. It did take the very life out of you. And you find yourself trying to scrape and crawl and get yourself back together because it literally killed your spirit spirit man it literally killed everything on the inside of you but you need to be encouraged watch this that if you suffered any of these injuries in faith you can do just like Jesus did you can get back up and live yeah 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 because as you learn to protect yourself at all times look at somebody matter of fact if you like what I'm saying if you love what I'm saying if you love God and pepperoni pizza just type in the in the comment sections P Y A A T P Y AAT, protect yourself uh, at all times. Yeah, protect yourself uh, at all times. What do I mean when I say protect yourself uh, at all times? What do I mean, this Batman? What do you mean when you say protect yourself uh, at all times? I mean, uh, you have to guard your spirit, uh, you have to guard your heart, uh, you have to guard your mind, uh, you have to guard your ear gate, uh, you have to guard your eye gate uh, so that you can stand firmly in today's time. We live in a mean world, y'all. Come on now, let's not fake the funk on this. Uh, let's tell the truth, Trail. We live in a mean world. Uh, we live in a mean world, yeah. We live in a cruel world. Yeah, we live in a, a, a world uh, where people are meaner than rattlesnakes and more vicious than a junkyard dog. We live in a world where, where kids and babies are dying everywhere. They're dying every day. You can't even drop kids off now to your own relative's house. I got a friend, his nephew was killed weeks ago, uh, leaving his grandmother's house. Uh, and they shot that boy in his car. Shot him in his head and, and, and caused that boy to die and he was just leaving his grandma's house. Uh, he was supposed to even he was supposed to go see some family walked uh, and they killed him over mistaken identity uh, yeah you can't even sit at the gas pump uh, without having to look over your shoulder and watch your surroundings and uh, worried about somebody trying to pull up on you we live in a mean world uh, we live in a mean world where people are calling wrong right uh, and right wrong and confidently doing it good god almighty uh, we live in a mean world we live in a mean world uh, that's backwards where they're accepting everything uh, uh, you'll only live once. I bind that YOLO demon. Yeah, you only live once and it's got you crooked and jacked up and twisted. Got you doing stuff and you on your way. You got a one-way ticket to hell. All because you only live once. Well, guess what? You better weigh that baby because if you got to go down, if you got to go to the lake of fire for only living once, I don't want to live once, but I want to go to the place where I know I can have eternal life. You got to protect yourself at all times because we live in a world now where you've literally got to watch every single thing that you do. We live in a world now where agendas are being pushed. People are pushing agendas now. They're manipulating people, pushing agendas. And because they know we so gully sometimes and we so, we so uh, oblivious sometimes, uh, we fall and pray to tactics. Good God Almighty. We live in a cruel world. We live in a world now that's accepting everything. Now, and they're rejecting our Father, good God Almighty. Uh, they're receiving everything uh, and rejecting the Lord of glory. Good God Almighty. Uh, we live in such a cruel, cruel, cruel world. Yeah. And I know the church mother sometimes, yeah, they will say talking about this cruel world uh, and how it would do it sometimes. Watch this. Uh, that Satan through his web and lies of manipulation.
manipulation, uh, we have to be careful sometimes uh, that we don't find ourselves in compromising positions uh, until we get to the point uh, of no return. Good God Almighty. Uh, and these church mothers, what I love them, uh, they will say, baby, every day with Jesus uh, is sweeter than the day before. But mothers, uh, can I be as transparent as a roll of scotch tape right now? Uh, what some days ain't sweeter than the day before. <laughs> some days are not sweeter than the day before. <laughs> because some days I'm frustrated. Good God Almighty. Frustrated. I'm just being as transparent as a roll of scotch tape right now. Uh, as some days I get frustrated. Good God. Uh, sometimes I get weak uh, out on this Christian journey. And there are times uh, where I feel like giving up and turning my head and walking away. <laughs> but like a song that my father used to sing. Oh no. I just can't do that. <laughs> if I want to see Jesus. Uh, that I, I, I've got to endure all these trials uh, and ask the Lord to strengthen me. Good God Almighty. Some days I have to deal with the issues and matters of my own heart. Uh, and I don't always like it. I don't always uh, like the issues and matters of uh, of my own heart. Good God. Some days, uh, if I'll be honest, I might not like the man that I see in the mirror some days. Uh, I'm just being transparent as a roller scotch tape right now. Uh, some days I may not like the man that I see. You may not like the woman that you see in the mirror. You might not like the man that you see uh, in the mirror. And some days, uh, what I had to cry a river of tears. Uh, and as much as I love my mother, as beautiful as she is, uh, my own mama never told me uh, that there would be days like this. Uh, days that I have to go through where I'll be sitting in my room sometimes uh, asking God when, when, when God, or God why, God what, what's going on, what's happening around me but it's in these weak moments to myself that I got to get like David and I ask God to hide me in his pavilion yeah and in the secret of his tabernacle I have to remind myself uh, that feelings are natural but I can't be so caught up in the feeling of frustration that I forget to trust the father, good God you got to protect yourself at all times because Satan will take that feeling. He'll take that frustration. He'll take that manipulation and try to turn it around and warp your mind and cause you to be in a place of no return. Good God. Uh, if you love God and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza, type in the comment section P Y A A T. Protect yourselves at all times. Believers, you got to protect yourself at all times. You got to protect yourself. At all times, you have to protect yourself at all times so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, it's interesting here. Paul, in the text, Paul is writing to the Ephesians in chapter 6. He's writing to them, and uh, he's talking. He starts off chapter 6 talking about obedience. He starts off chapter 6 talking about obedience and children respecting authority. He's addressing different topics in the church. Chapter 6, he's talking now. Now, if you got a notepad or you can come back and watch this because I'm going to give you all some information on the roadmap that Paul laid out for believers to protect themselves at all times. Paul lays out a roadmap coming down to verse 10. He gives you a roadmap now starting at verse 10 uh, uh, on how to uh, protect. So, matter of fact, verse 13, he gives you the roadmap. It starts off saying this, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Watch this. He starts giving you the roadmap in Ephesians 6.14. He says, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. But uh, let's stop. Let's stop the car right here. Come on. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Watch this. The Greek word for loins is osphos. Osphos. The Greek word for loins is osphos, which means hip. Good God Almighty. It means hip. That word truth there in the Greek, it comes from a Greek, it, it, it means in the Greek doctrine. So if anybody understands and knows the anatomy of the body, the hip stabilizes the walk. Watch this. So if the hip stabilizes the walk, then the truth is the only way you will have a, a stable walk in Christ. So in other words, uh, if the other words, if the hip stabilizes the walk, he's saying have your hips stabled about 
with the truth or with doctrine. And it's the only way that you'll be able to be stable in your Christian walk. Osphus, hips, loins, osphus, hips, o loins, osphus, hips. If the hip stabilizes the body, he's saying, gird about with truth. He's saying, have your hips gird about with doctrine. That's the first piece of, uh, uh, of evidence. That's the first, the first step. He's giving you the road map here on how to make it in the evil day. Have your hips gird about with doctrine. Then he says, have on the breastplate righteousness. Yes, Let's deal with this. Uh, having on the breastplate of righteousness. That word breastplate comes from a Greek word, thorax, which means chest or, or, or corslet. And the corslet is just chest armor. Watch this. He said the breastplate of righteousness or the chest plate, the corslet of righteousness. That word, the definitions of righteousness in the Greek means character. So he's saying and, and, and having on the chest armor of character. Boy, I wish I had a full house this morning. Good God Almighty. So in other words, he said he gave you two steps. He said what? He said you got to have your gifts girt about with doctrine. Two, you got to have your chest armor of character. Three, Ephesians 6, 15, and he says this, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That word shod. In the Greek, it comes from a word, hupodeo. Hupodeo, H-U-P-O-D-E-O. -E it means to bind or to put on. He's saying, put it on, watch this. That word peace, meaning in the Greek, it means rest. So he's saying, you've got to bind and put on the preparation of the gospel or the good news of rest. So you've got to have your hips girt about with, with doctrine, you got to have the chest plate of character on, and you got to have, you got to have, uh, you got to bind together, put on uh, uh, with the preparation of, of the gospel of rest. Ooh -wee. Paul is doing some talking, y'all. He preaching better than me. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 16, it says this, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Faith in the Greek, watch this, it means assurance. Eee. And if anybody knows anything about a shield, the shield can sometimes be shaped like a door, but a shield is a protection. So he's saying let, let the protection of assurance, put it on. Above all, above everything that I'm telling you, he's saying take the shield of assurance wherewith ye shall be able to withstand all the fiery or quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, Ephesians 6 and 17 in the text, he's saying this, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Good God Almighty. That word uh, helmet comes from a Greek word, uh, perikipophelia. Perikipophelia. I'm going to say it again. Perikipophelia. It comes from a Greek word, perikipophelia, which means an encirclement of the head and salvation in the Greek it comes from a meaning that means defense so he's saying and you got to take the encirclement of your head and the defense and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God he just laid out the road map for you all as believers as us as believers to be able to protect ourselves against the wild of the devil let's reframe let's rewind this now so he's saying now we gotta have our hips girt about with doctrine yeah he's saying because that's the only way good God almighty he said have on the chest plate or the chest covering of character so we gotta have doctrine and character okay ditto okay Ephesians now 6 15, he's saying we got to have uh, the binding together, our feet bound together with the preparation of the gospel of rest. Good God Almighty. So now you got to have doctrine, you got to have character, and you've got to rest. Good God Almighty. Paul is laying it out, y'all. This ain't Ron, it's Paul talking. In Ephesians chapter 6 16, he said, Now take the shield of assurance. Good God. So you got to have truth, you got to have doctrine, you got to have character, you got to have rest, and now you got to have assurance. Good God Almighty. And the last thing he 
said, have the helmet or encirclement of defense. Uh, so now you got to have doctrine. You got to have character. You got to have rest. Uh, you got to have assurance. Uh, and now you got to have defense. Good God Almighty, what a starting five. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, you got to have all these things uh, if you expect to make it through the fiery darts of the devil. Uh, he laid out the road map. This wasn't the book of Ron Lyles, no. Uh, but Paul was writing to the Ephesians. Yeah, he was writing to the church at Ephesus telling them uh, how they're going to make it. And if I can just plagiarize for a minute, Paul, if you don't mind, if I can copy you that the only way we're going to make it through the day, y'all, the only way that we're going to make it through this life, y'all, the only way we're going to make it through this life, believers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, the only way we're going to make it through this, y'all, uh, is we got to follow the road map uh, that Paul laid out for us. Uh, we got to follow the road map that Paul has given us uh, to be able to stand in the evil day. Yeah, we've got to stand on doctrine. We've got to stand on truth, y'all. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We've got to have the chest plate of character, y'all. We've got to have truth and character on our side. Uh, we can't get so caught up now in the, in, in the fiery darts that shot at us uh, that we start losing our character. Good God Almighty, that our character starts to shift, our integrity starts starts to shift. Good God Almighty. And we got to have our feet bound together good God with the preparation of the gospel of rest. Come unto me all ye that are labor that, and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Good God Almighty. So stop worrying about it. Uh, you got to have truth. Uh, you got to have character and you got to rest. Thank you Paul. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to have the shield or the protection of assurance. So now you got to have truth. Uh, you got to have character. You have to have have rest uh, and you have to have uh, assurance that's the only way you're going to make it good god almighty and you've got to have on the helmet of salvation uh, which is the, the sword or the or the encirclement of defense uh, and you've got to have the sword of the spirit uh, which is the word of god but when paul was telling the believers about this he was pushing prayer uh, because you can't have none of this if you don't even pray good god almighty uh, to protect yourself at all times you got to learn the art of prayer uh, you got to get down on your knees. You got to lay out prostrate before the Lord uh, and tell God to operate on you, God. Operate on me, God, from the inside out. Do whatever you got to do with me, God. Uh, God, I'm praying. I'm laying before you. We don't even want to fast no more because we want two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. We don't want to fast no more, good God. But sometimes fasting is the only way that you can get rid of those things inside of you, uh, that you can clean out those cobwebs on your spirit man Paul laid out the road map for you to be able to make it through you got to listen to Paul you can't listen to every Tom Dick and Harry because the problem with the world now everybody got itchy ears and they want to hear stuff that can please them and stuff that can make them feel good and stuff that can make them feel a certain way and things that can give them the attention that they're seeking but nobody wants to stand up and tear down the walls of manipulation manipulation, trickery, and divisiveness. But I refuse uh, to go to hell in a handbasket. Good God Almighty, uh, I've got to protect myself at all times. Somebody uh, give me some hearts, likes, or something in the comments because I can't see your faces. Uh, and type P-Y-A-A-T. Yeah, good God. I told y'all I feel like preaching. Uh, sometimes in this walk, you got to understand uh, that you're going to get hit with these types of punches. Uh, and I'm going to ride into the sunset. Give me about five minutes before I ride out. Uh, sometimes in this walk, you're going to get hit uh, with these types of punches. Yeah, uh, sometimes you're going to get hit, walk with low blows. Uh, and you got to understand that in the boxing ring, whenever a fighter was hit with low blows, it was because uh, the fighter was either frustrated that was throwing the blow, uh, he had to be getting his tail taxed. Let's just say it. Uh, he was getting whooped on and walked. Uh, when fighters that are getting whooped on throw a low blow, uh, they throw that low blow because uh, they want to take the momentum from the fighter uh, that's beating their tail. Let's just be honest. Uh, they want to take the momentum from the fighter uh, that's whooping them upside the head. Uh, and it's in that moment, watch this as Christians, uh, when you've taken low blows, uh, that you got to be like Paul and you got to have your loins. He told you, uh, when you've taken low blows you got to have your loins girt about with doctrine uh, because there's people around that want to shake your momentum uh, there's people around that want to take the momentum from you uh, the 
devil himself wants to take your momentum. If you run in the well, he wants to get all this zeal and excitement out of you. He wants to drain you and put you on an island by yourself. But you got to protect yourself at all times. Another punch that boxers use, or a tactic, not even a punch, is called the headbutt. Yeah. Boxers, when they're frustrated, like I said, they're getting their tail taxed, y'all. When they're getting whooped on in frustration, they'll headbutt the other fighter. They'll do it in the clinch and they'll move their head up and headbutt them. And this makes the fighter groggy and it knocks his vision off. And the fighter that's fighting sometimes has to step back and rub his head or rub his eye. Because when you get headbutted sometimes, it knocks off your equilibrium and it causes you not to think straight. Well, the Christian faith, good God, even though the devil may try to headbutt you and try to distort your view of the Christ and try to distort your view of the Father, you got to protect yourself at all times. One last punch, and I'm going to leave y'all alone, good God. It's the haymaker, good God. They throw the haymaker, good God, to knock you out, to knock you down, and ultimately make your whole world go upside down. So while the room is spinning and you can't get yourself together, Tylenol on the leave can't even help you. You can't even get your vision together. You got something worse than a migraine in the spirit where it seems like everything you look at is a distorted view. Good God. But when you protect yourself at all times, Paul gave you the road map, y'all. You got to protect yourself to be able to last the haymakers and use the sword of the spirit spirit uh, because Muhammad Ali had a phrase. He said, I float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. So that means he had the footwork to move uh, and he had the offense. Good God. Uh, he had this walk. God Almighty. And believers, you got to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. You got to be able to have the sword of the spirit uh, to withstand the fiery darts of the devil. You got to have the footwork. You got to be able to use the rope of dope because Ali knew when he fought George Foreman he knew something on the inside he knew that Foreman may have had the power but he knew Foreman didn't have the stamina yeah he knew Foreman didn't have the stamina y'all so even though Foreman could swing hard he knew in the rounds in the later rounds in the championship rounds I feel like preaching in the championship rounds I wish my brothers and sisters was here cause by now somebody would be running across the front Ali knew in the championship rounds that Foreman wouldn't be able to hang so in the earlier rounds he laid against the ropes and he let Foreman swing. Bang! Pow. He let Foreman swing. Boom! Pow. He let Foreman swing. But later on Foreman started to get tired and he started hugging and holding on. And people thought Ali was crazy. How can he stand against the ropes and take all this punishment when Ali was just biding his time? Good God Almighty! When Ali sensed that foreman was getting tired. Ali began then at that point to use his mechanics and he hit foreman with an uppercut that stunned him and it caused him to lose his balance and he hit him with a right hook and at this time the giant was already falling. The giant was already slain because he did not have the stamina. Good God Almighty, you got to understand saints and friends that even though Satan may seem powerful, he ain't got the stamina to keep up with you. Why don't he have the stamina? Because it's a fixed fight. Yeah, it's a fixed fight. So the devil ain't got that type of stamina. He ain't got eternal stamina. No, because guess what? He got to be judged just like you do. So he ain't got the stamina to fight you for eternity. Because when I die, hallelujah, by and by. I 
fly away. But the only way that can happen is if I protect myself at all times. I feel like preaching, y'all. I was on YouTube and I was watching the other day, about three or four days ago, I was watching the electric eel and I was watching an alligator. There was a man at a lake and he was uh, filming this encounter. The alligator was trying to kill the eel. He was stuck in the electric eel. He was sizing that electric eel up and he was looking at him and figuring out which angle he was going to bite him from. Good God Almighty. He was trying to figure it out and guess what y'all? He did not know that the electric eel is a fish that houses 650 volts of electrons in his body. Oh my God, y'all. So the man filmed this and he said, watch this, y'all. So the alligator came in and he chomped down on the eel. And when his mouth closed, the eel released 650 volts of electrons throughout that alligator's body. And because alligators by nature, they don't know how to let go. The alligator was continuously shaken. You can look it up on YouTube. I'll give you the link. He was continuously shaken, Walt. And his body was gyrating and jittery because he wouldn't let go of the eel. So the alligator's body was continuously shaken until finally the eel had sipped enough power and electricity through his body that the alligator died. Hold on one second, Walt. Give me one second. I'm coming, I promise. The alligator died. But watch this, Walt. The alligator died still holding on. To Yeah, see, the devil didn't want me to give that representation to y'all. Because what I'm going to tell y'all next is going to help y'all make it. Yeah, so the alligator is dead now. But he's holding on to the eel's body. Good God Almighty. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, y'all, in this walk of life, in this life of sin, good God Almighty, in this world of sin, uh, you can't be like the alligator. No, baby, you got to be like the eel. Let me say it one more time. You can't be like the alligator because the alligator died still holding on to what was harming him. He died trying to hold on when he should have let go. Yeah, he died holding on one second while when he should have let go. Good God Almighty. He died holding on. I'm going to say it one more time. When he should have let go. Good God Almighty. But y'all be like that eel. That when the troubles and trials of life come and clamp down on you. You got enough power on the inside. You got enough power on the inside to be able to withstand the devil and slay the demons that are behind you. I'm ready now, Walt. Can I have some ice cream, please? If you don't mind, brother, make it with extra sprinkles. Yeah, in the book of Judges. If you don't mind, can I preach to y'all, y'all? And I got to ride out into the sunset. But in the book of Judges, chapter number 16, Samson and Delilah had an issue because Samson in the book of Judges chapter number 16 met a woman by the name of Delilah oh y'all said he met him a woman by the name of Delilah Delilah was hired by the Philistines to come in and distract Samson to come in and woo Samson to use manipulative tactics and try to find what Samson's strength line have I got a witness have I got one witness but Samson was told 
from his birth, y'all. He was told, don't tell nobody where your strength lies. But Samson went through his life, slayed a lion. Samson took the jawbone of an ass and slayed a uh, Philistines, uh, yes he did, uh, he slayed uh, thousands uh, of Philistines, uh, but Samson uh, could not shake uh, good old Delilah, uh, how is it uh, that Samson, uh, you were able uh, to conquer Philistines, uh, how is it uh, Samson, uh, you were able uh, to beat the Philistines, uh, you been able uh, to beat a lion, uh, you slayed uh, a lion, uh, how is it, 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 that you were able uh, to do all of that, Samson, but you could not uh, shake the lion. Uh, where well, y'all, the Bible says that Delilah came and said, Samson, show me where your strength lies. Samson told her, take some green whips and tie them together. And if you bind me up, that is where my strength lies. She took the whips, which is bowstrings, and tied up Samson. The Bible says that Samson, when she called in the Lord of the Philistines, Samson got up, Samson got up and broke off the bowstring. Good God of mine, the Lord of God, man. And she told Samson, you lied to me, you mocked me because I asked you where your strength lies. I told you and you told me to take whips and tie them together and that's where the strength lies but you broke the whips so you lied to me Samson said well I tell you what take some ropes and bind my hands together tie me up oh tie me up tie me up and bind me together and I won't be able to break the rope. So Delilah took the rope and bound Samson together. Yeah. And yelled out, the Philistines are coming. The Philistines are coming. Samson awoke and broke the rope. Ah, Delilah said, Samson, you lied to me. You lied to me because you told me that the ropes would bind you together. And when I tried, you broke the ropes. You mocked me, Samson. You lied to me. Good God Almighty. Well, Samson said, well, one more again. One more time. Let me tell you what. You lied yeah, Delilah, I tell you what, take my hair and tie it in the locks with a pin. And when you tie it up, when you tie it up, guess what, Delilah, my strength will be gone. So Delilah, one more time, listen to Samson, and Samson told her, she did what she said, she tied his hair up in pins, locked it up and waited, and said, Samson, the Philistines are coming right now, Samson, shut up, Samson, shut up, ah, he got up, ah, he got up, Samson, Got up and broke the pin. Delilah said, Samson, yet again, for the third time, you lied to me. You told me if I locked your hair up, that the pin that's holding your hair would strip your strength. Samson felt bad now. Samson felt bad. Samson felt bad. He felt so bad that he told her, 
He began to pull her in and told her the secret that he should have said. Samson let his guard down. Samson began to drop his guard. He stopped protecting himself at all times because Samson told Delilah, my strength is in my hair. If you shave or cut my hair off, I won't have no strength. So the Bible says, Samson lay down. Delilah begin to stroke Samson. Delilah begin to comfort Samson because he told her the matters of his heart. And in Judges 619, the Bible says that Samson fell asleep, fell asleep on Delilah. He fell asleep upon Delilah. He fell asleep upon Delilah. And I come to let you know that sometimes it's not the ones that hate you, but sometimes, just like Samson, it's the ones that you sleep on. It's the ones that you sleep on. It's the ones that you sleep on that'll do you in. But Samson was sleeping on Delilah, like you and me. Some of us are sleeping on people that being us no good. But we got to protect ourselves at all times. Yeah, ah yeah. Good God of mine, I feel like my uncle Walter. I know he's a so Samson is asleep now. Delilah called in the Lord of the Philistines. So while he was sleeping on Delilah, the Philistine Lord came in and began to cut Samson strand by strand. So when Delilah said, Samson, wake up the Philistines have come in. He got up but didn't have no power. Good God of mine. He woke up, but didn't have no power. He got up, but didn't have no power. I wish the church was full. Good God of mine. He didn't have no power. So the Philistines took Samson. They plucked his eyes out. They beat Samson. And they had a celebration. Yeah, but Samson began to pray and said, Lord, give me one more trip, one more chance to display my strength. So Samson at the party got between two pillars. And the Bible says that Samson began to push while they were laughing. Samson began to push while they were partying. Ah, Samson began to push and begin. The pillars began to break and everything came down. And he slayed all the Philistines that was in that party. Good God Almighty. But all of this happened because Samson didn't protect himself at all times. Some of you are going through things. Some of you are having a Samson experience because you didn't protect yourself at all times. Good God Almighty. But living in the world that we live in, you have to protect yourself. You have to gird yourself. You have to, have to watch yourself. Good God Almighty. You have to guard your eye game. You have to guard your ear game. You have to guard your mind. You have to guard your heart at all costs. Because the devil is walking about as a roaring lion seeking out who he may devour. And if that's you, he's going to eat you up and spit you back out and eat you up again. 
and spit you back out and eat you up one more time and spit you back out. But guess what? When my enemies and my fools to eat of my flesh. Guess what? They stumbled as hell. And God is, if you protect yourself, he's going to make your enemies stumble and fall. He's going to make your enemies be your footstool. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, is there anybody that's going to protect yourself at all times? So the storm keeps on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. But the hope that lies within me is reassured. If I keep my eyes upon the dead, upon the distant shores, I got an anchor. Is it anybody out there that got an anchor? I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. Through it all, I've had some hills to climb. I've had some lonely days. I've had some sleepless nights. But when, y'all don't hear me, I said when, I look around and think things over. complain because I've learned how to protect myself at all times. If I got a witness here that can protect yourself, protect yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be caught gazing. I can't be caught scrolling. I can't be worried about what you're posting, what you're saying. I can't be worried about your IG story. I can't be worried about your Facebook story. I can't be worried about your TikTok. But I got to protect myself. I got to. I got to. I got to protect myself. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Protect myself, baby brother. We gotta protect ourselves. The devil is after the anointed, but we gotta stand, 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 stand. When I get weak, pull me up. When I get old, walk with me, talk with me. Hold me, ah, hold me, oh, hold me, oh, hold me. When I can't walk, remind me to protect myself at all times. Yada, yada. Somebody get a breakthrough. Somebody get a breakthrough right now. If you're in your house, in your living room, in your car, jump up 
and give God a praise. Somebody, anybody, give God a praise right now. 